And in part, I think what what interested or what what I found interesting as well was that was that, um, and this may be something that we can in more general terms talk about too, that <clears throat> France does have a pretty significant um, problem with racism. Um, I mean, when you go to Paris and there are certain neighborhoods that are very ethnically um, uh, ethnically uh, cohesive and certain mm -hmm. parts, I mean, Northern France that, uh, or Northern Paris that had the um, breakout of violence over racial issues. And in part, I think that's interesting that France is trying to work through that past with slavery and the slave trade. Um, how much is kind of that history and France's modern situation influencing each other? Is there kind of, is this seen as sort of a dialogue that we can use to improve racial questions in the country? Or is this sort of seen as, um, well, it happened in the past and it's history? I would say that um, there are several levels, but I would say that this work has, that there is this debate in France uh, for a while then since the 1990s. France uh, in 2001 passed uh, the law of Tobira. There is a law recognizing slavery and the Atlantic slave trade as crimes against humanity. But there is still, of course, uh, a lot of uh, uh, resistance from then. There are, there are two sides. On the one hand, there was a sort of official memory of slavery that, was, uh, that is pretty much established, then a national day. Uh, May 10, that is a holiday with uh, ceremonies, which we do not have in the United States. Uh, then, but the problem, of course, when you make memory official is that you crystallize that around that date and around those issues. And mm -hmm. for certain uh, politicians and so on, uh, perhaps it becomes a... Um, um, an excuse to say that we no longer have this problem here. First, because uh, even the term race could not, uh, was something that was uh, in official documents, something that could not be used in France. I remember that a, a first article that I published, I think, uh, I don't know when it was that, then uh, almost 20 years ago, and uh, I worked on these uh, French travel accounts uh, in Brazil that uh, represented enslaved people. And it was in French because this is, uh, my studies were uh, in French uh, at the PhD level. And uh, I used the term race, has, and I was told by one of the reviewers that that term was not, <laughs> was not uh, used there in France that this was something, I don't know, from the United States or Canada or so on. <laughs> in any case, um, then uh, this is the problem. Then I would say that the, 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 when memories becomes official, then the, the, there are perhaps less channels to, to have these, uh, these debates because the debate needs to pass through the official channel. Now, for example, France has, there was a national committee for the memory of the slave with intellectuals, academics, activists, and so on. And now there is a national foundation for the memory of the slavery. And there are plans to have a, a memorial in Paris because most of these, the, there, there have been debates uh, for, for very long. Then and I think that the best book that covers this in terms of, um, the, the associations and the groups debating this is the book by Crystal Fleming, uh, Resurrecting Slavery, that was published about three years ago by Temple University Press. She focuses a lot on Paris, but Paris has these debates and the, these uh, associations of different uh, Black groups then associated with Africa, who uh, claim an identity associated with the Caribbean, but who are all mm -hmm. French, but no memorial, uh, no museum addressing the issue of slavery and not big exhibitions either. 
Now, these exhibitions took place in Nantes, in Bordeaux, there, are, there were the ports. There is mm -hmm. this idea that is there, is, it, the story is connected to the ports, but Paris was somewhat a, a separate uh, entity. And I think that this you, you change, and it's already changing. But it's always a, a game that uh, there are pushes, there are periods when uh, things uh, evolved uh, in other uh, directions. But these debates have been there with black activists, with academics uh, pushing as well. Also with the dialogue with the diaspora, mm -hmm. uh, then in Africa and in the United States as well. This contributes, of course, like uh, when you are on social media, for example, I see uh, my colleagues work on uh, Asian history that there are, there are always debates with uh, French journalists and French academics who have pretty much this image of France as disconnected uh, from the slavery and from the history of the Asian Revolution, and they are daily pushing that. Then this is something I would say that it's a question of time that we are going to have more and more of these uh, debates, and this recognition will have to to occur. Now, racism and white supremacy are not going to change because there will be a couple of monuments or um, then a, a couple of dates commemorating this issue. And that. That sort of is the big issue, and um, that, that always reminds me of Mitch Landers' statement when the when New Orleans removed the uh, Confederate monument, and he kind of nicely said that this is not the end. So this is sort of the start of a conversation that we need to have with regard to white supremacy, racism, the monument landscape in the country. Mm -hmm. 